there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another video in the Mega Shop series. This is the Mega Shop man right here. So this is Toby with DWS Steel Structures. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir. Thanks Thank for you. being up here. So you and your wife run DWS Steel yes. Structures yes, out yes. of Stokesdale, North Carolina. Yep. We'll post a phone number across here, our website and everything, so you guys can uh, access that if you want to. Uh, first of all, we're building a steel building. Let's talk about where you, what's your service area? So how far away do you work from Stokesdale, North Carolina? That's North Central North Carolina. Yeah. We try to stay within about 250 mile radius okay. of here. So uh, four and a half, five hours, something like that gotcha. is, is, is tipping like the, our, our edge. So you can just about get down into Georgia, yes. kind of over next to Tennessee, uh, North Carolina mountains, yep. I guess. Yep. Coast, all the way to the coast, right. up into Virginia. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome, awesome. So guys, if you're on the East Coast, Call Toby, there you go. <laughs> for sure. So guys, this is not a sponsored video or anything, but I want you to be well informed about the construction process and what we're building right here. So come along today as we talk a little bit about the steel structure, why we're going with steel versus wood. We're gonna talk about all sorts of fun stuff and we'll go back and give you a few details so you guys can enjoy it. What we're building here is a steel structure and we're gonna let you kind of go into the descriptive uh, words that you need to have because I can't really, I can't speak intelligently about this yeah. so tell me what this building is and, and uh, why a person might want to go with a steel structure like this so we'll start with the manufacturer so there's, there's several manufacturers out in the marketplace that, that, that build these buildings or, or fabricate and design fabricate and detail these buildings uh, we, we chose to use uh, American buildings we, we've been partners with them for many years and uh, we, we know their people we know their product and so it's it really makes a good relationship for us and uh, so we, we understand how to order their building, which is a very important part yeah, yeah. Of, of what we're doing here. And so when Josh and I got together, it's been a couple of years ago now, we started yeah. talking about you know what you wanted in this building and how you wanted this building to look and the size and the height and these things. Yep. yep. So you know we used their design software to determine you know just what made most sense economically for Josh. Yeah, absolutely. So this building is prefab, but it's custom prefab. It's exactly. Okay. They consider it custom engineering. Gotcha. It's a custom building because it, it, we couldn't take your building and put it on somebody else's property right. and, and, it, and it do what you want it to do or they want it to do for them. So. so the first step in all this was me and Toby got together and we talked about what I wanted. And if you look back through my videos, I'll post a link scrolling up here in just a minute uh, to the uh, building that I decided that I wanted. And you saw that too. I, yep. I did a video about the building and this is basically the building that I yep. designed on my own. Now I took that design and then we went, went in and tweaked a few things so right. that we got the maximum value out of our building and that's where Toby comes in yeah. and really shines. So uh, we're doing a few things different on this building than you would normally do. Uh, Toby installed the windows and I'm acting as the general contractor. So if you are gonna do this yourself, uh, you may reach out to Toby, have him give you an estimate on the building, but he's got friends and folks that have been in the industry right. that can serve as a general contractor, and I'm learning as I go. So I learned I needed to have a dumpster out here. <laughs> I learned that I needed to have a place for the boys to go to the bathroom other than out in the woods uh, because they eat a lot of tacos, right? <laughs> Which is cool, man. I mean, I just didn't know all this stuff. I didn't know that typically you guys don't install the windows and you don't install the roll-up doors or anything like that like that. None right. of that's included in the price. So right. as the general contractor, I had to go out and find these uh, doors, windows, right. the sizes, everything like that, and then communicate back with yeah. Toby and figure all that out. Now, as a steel structure, the process goes, I meet with you, I tell you what I want, we work through the design process, then we send that off and we get a quote from the building manufacturer. Right. Take some, right now, what, six months, seven months out now? Yeah, to get the building, yes. Yeah, to get mm -hmm. the materials, actual materials. So we ordered this back in September, October right. or something, right about the time I was yep. going through the big D, which is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, we did all that. I ordered my garage doors. I ordered my concrete. I underestimated the cost of the concrete, the doors and the windows. So just doors and windows uh, on this building is somewhere around seven to eight thousand dollars. Concrete was seventy thousand dollars for for this pad and for the foundation right. 
slash footings that have to go around it. And this has to have a significant amount of footings, is that right? That's correct, right. yeah. So there's a huge amount of concrete underneath the ground where these bolts come up through and yep. bolt together the entire system. So it's really cool, it's an interesting design, it's a totally uh, uh, repeatable thing. So if you wanted to order the very same building that Stony Ridge Farmer has, you can do that, yeah. right? Yes. And you've already got it. It so. would be the Stony Ridge Farmer Signature Series. Signature Series, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, why go with a steel building? And I'm gonna tell you some things that I've heard versus things that might be true or might not be true. So a steel building. On the top there, those are called purlins. Right. They go across the top. Across the sides are called girts. Or right. Girts, okay. So the girts and the purlins go in. The metal gets screwed to the girts and the purlins. And the insulation goes on the outside. And then on the outside of that goes the steel. That's right. Uh, the, the siding. All the siding is cut to fit, perfectly matches. It's just like a big Lego set, pretty right, much. Right, Okay. So these guys, once you put a building up or two buildings up, you get better and better yeah. and better. So the window trim outs look really, really good, guys. When it comes to building a pole barn or a wooden structure versus a steel structure, there are a few things that everybody should be thinking about from what, I'm heard, what I've heard is that a steel structure, it's all metal. So the metal frame, the metal on the outside, everything is all metal and it's gonna expand and contract with heat and cool cycles. Right. If you have a wooden building, you take a piece of steel and you screw it to a piece of wood, they are going to expand and contract at yeah. different rates and therefore true. wear out your screws. Is that right? That is true, yes. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why, and that's, Toby and I talked about this six, seven months ago. That's one of the reasons why in all of my research that I chose to go with a steel building, a steel structure like this. Now, what does wood do when it gets wet? It begins to rot. It begins to rot. <laughs> yeah. So why, why aren't we building a 112 by 50 foot, 20 foot tall at the eaves pole barn? Well, because we don't want to rebuild yeah. our pole barn in 20, 30, 40, 50 years right. or whatever. So I'm 45 years old. I want this building to last, outlast me, and it will outlast Absolutely. me. This building will be here forever. I mean, that's it. As long as the concrete lasts, that's for it's sure. Here. Got a lot of comments on the concrete not gonna last, so we'll keep you updated uh, on it's that. It's gonna be good. Yeah, everything's engineered. Everything is drawn out, designed, and everything like that. So inside this building, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five garage door bays. You'll see all that stuff go up here in future videos. Um, but I wanted to discuss what the benefits, you, t you tell us what, there, they've got, there has to be more right. benefits of a steel well, building. Well, obviously the longevity is one and the span is another. So when, you, when you're getting into economics from a metal building standpoint, there's, there's a break point between wood trusses or even steel trusses versus a pre-engineered frame. And if that, anything less than 40 kind of makes sense that you can look at wood, eh, well, depending on wood pricing, right? Yeah, Current yeah. pricing. But, so what we've seen is even though steel has gone up, we, we've still seen that anything 40 foot in span or wider makes sense for to, you know steel use. To build uh, absolutely, steel. yes. Yeah, because absolutely. you're going to pay just about the same, if not more, for a wooden yep. truss than you yep. would for a steel building, yep. and you don't have to have supports in the middle. It's all right. engineered to size to support right. what it's supposed to support. Right. Now, what kind of wind load does this building have? This building right here is designed for 115 mile an hour wind, which is gotcha. considered the ultimate wind speed. Which is it? This is what, what is what's required here gotcha. in, our, in our area. And we're about three hours from the coast, three to four hours from the coast, and we do experience hurricane weathers, yeah. hurricane force weathers. Tornadoes land here all the time. Tornado landed right in my little town right here and ripped the whole town apart brick buildings got ripped apart. So when it comes to something like that, a 300 mile an hour wind, yeah, it ain't it's gonna hard. hold up. Yeah, it's uh, to hold nothing's you. gonna hold up, okay? Um, so we're gonna take you around, we're gonna show you a few details out here on the other side of this building, and we're gonna show you where the insulation has gone up. It's really interesting how all this stuff works, in my opinion, uh, and we'll give you guys opportunity to ask any questions you might have. Post them down there in the comments, and we'll get Toby to go down through the comments uh, over the next few weeks sure. and answer some of your questions, guys. So please post those questions and comments down there and let us know what you're thinking. Let's go look at some details. So we're over here on the finished side of the building. Now this isn't quite finished yet, is that right? Right. So they're gonna go back and they're hanging everything now, making sure it's very well supported. And then they're gonna go back and finish putting in all the screws and all the screw holes come pre-drilled on this? We actually pre-drill them ourselves in the field. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, so, nice. So what we do is we measure 
you know, they measure where the screw's gonna go. That keeps your screw lines being perfectly yeah, straight. Yep. Yes. So I've seen chalk lines, people put chalk lines on them or whatever. So you guys pre-drill, do you just line them up and then shoot a drill yes. right through the whole pack? Okay, yes. awesome, awesome stuff. So we're gonna give you guys some detail on the windows here and the windows are all trimmed in. There's a few doors that are provided by you guys. So when I ordered the building, I ordered three doors. They're heavy duty commercial doors with door closers. I think they have door yes. closers on mm -hmm. them. Uh, so they automatically close when you walk out the door. One of them has glass, two of them do not have glass. And there's a little bit of a difference in the price. What is it about? 100 bucks, 50 bucks, yeah, something, like, like, yeah, that. something like, yeah, like that. Yeah, it's not a not whole much. lot of difference in price. I suggest getting windows. The ones that I have on here now, some of them don't have windows, and I wish I would have. The windows, I mean, you just can't go wrong yeah. for sure. Definitely add some some light. Yeah, to you, absolutely. To your shop, sure. And the shop's going to be fairly dark here. We'll be doing a lot of filming in here, so guys, we don't have windows up in the top and in the shop area itself. We do have windows in the farm office and the farm butcher shop right here, and this is a farm building. You need to check with your local code, uh, whatever that might be, to figure out what you need to do to get your permitting process. Now, this is an agricultural building. So there is no permit in my county, but your county may be totally different. I handle that. He doesn't handle that. So you're the general contractor, you'll handle that, or you hire a general contractor to orchestrate all this. So Josh actually decided to go with a, uh, a residential window, which is not typically what we see in a pre-engineered building. Normally what we see in our pre-engineered buildings is a, is a fixed glass uh, with mullions and they're, you know normally they're custom so when we make the opening the glass subcontractor comes out and measures the glass or measures the opening and, and, and builds the frame for it for that particular opening. So this is one of the doors that Josh picked out. It's a residential door. It's a little bit different size than the, the commercial doors we typically see. So it's a custom frame out. Again you got your J trim, you got your header trim on both sides. And of course, what really looks nice here is that Josh elected to go with the darker color for the trim all the way around instead of following the color of the wall panel, which is an option, but this right here really, really makes this door pop. Yeah, I think it sets it off really, really nice. Uh, you guys have done a fantastic job right here trimming everything out. And this is again where your rain gutter is to catch rain to keep it off of uh, this wood surface. So this is the only wood surface on the exterior of the entire building. Make sure and get some paint on that pretty soon here. Moving forward, now we'll have to pour concrete. So it'll be a concrete pad that wraps around the outside of the building right here so we can go around to the front and there'll have to be a little bit of a sloped ramp right here and the concrete will be poured right up to the bottom edge of this lip right here where the bottom of the metal comes up. You don't want your concrete touching the metal because if you have your concrete touching the metal, it can be caustic and cause it to rust. Hey Josh, so this is one of our pre-assembled metal building doors. This was the one, like Joshua mentioned earlier, it's got the half glass and it has a automatic closure so that we can close the door right behind us. It comes complete with sub jams on both sides and the door jams all completed, put together in a shop, not in the field. So it just makes the installation so much faster. The door is square when it gets here. So all we have to do is stand it up. We put anchors in the concrete and put anchors in the girt above. The girt above is specifically uh, set at seven foot six, designed specifically to receive this door. This is the door with the glass in it. The door over here does not have glass, guys, and you can really tell the difference. So this is gonna be out the back porch here, and what I really thought about doing was actually putting a window right here so I could peek out the back, and we've got one extra window. I may end up talking them into doing that. I don't know, but uh, this will be the uh, outdoor uh, man urinal right here because <laughs> sometimes a man's got to go outside i don't like to aim you like sometimes yeah <laughs> so folks this is rod bracing so this braces the building and keeps it from dominoing down and that would be a bad thing and so the way the load path on this building works is it comes wind comes in from the ends and it goes through this strut system up at the top into this x bracing and if you see josh if you show them the bracing through the roof so what happens is, is the, the load comes in th through the purlins into the X bracing through the roof. And then we bring it, we transfer it down through these bays, these brace bays down to the foundation. And that's why part of our footing design is designed for this, this load. Now the footings underneath this section right here and this section over here are absolutely huge. We'll try to get you some uh, footage of pouring those footings. That was a huge area uh, of concrete right there. Uh, there's probably five yards of concrete underneath each one of these piers. 
There's a square box right here. Tell me about that square box that's behind us. So that, that is called a portal frame. And so a portal frame is used when we can't utilize X-bracing. X-bracing, obviously, as you can tell, is much more economical based on just the thickness of the material versus the amount of material we have in that portal frame. Gotcha. But because we have an overhead door and a walk door in that bay, we didn't have any other place to put X-bracing on that wall. Gotcha. So we need at least one bay of bracing in that wall and with, with the number of windows and overhead doors we have, we chose to put it in this bay number three where we could have X bracing on the back wall, bring the, bring the load path all the way over on gotcha. both sides. So this portal frame right here, you guys can see it's just a big square box up down there. That serves as the X bracing for this entire side of the building right here because we have so many doors and stuff. Now if we had doors on the back side, we'd have to do this on the back side also. This again is pre-engineered from the factory, so it's all set for the load bearing and wind speeds that we might get here in North Carolina. So guys, this is the insulation. This entire building's insulated from top to bottom, right? Correct. Our 13 on the walls and... 19 in the roof. 19 in the roof, because the roof, and we also chose a roofing material that's more reflective. We did a silver roof, what's it called? Yes, Galvaloom, Galvaloom yes. Galvaloom, uh, and is that a galvanized coating that goes on yes, there? Yes, yes. How many years of lifespan can we expect to get out of a Galvaloom roof? So it's warranted for 25, but we're seeing these things last 50. Gotcha, awesome. The, the thing that wears the most on one of these buildings is going to be the screws, the rubber gaskets on the screws, right. is that correct? Right. Now you guys' drills are set to drill these in right. and squish that rubber gasket just to the right amount. That's is that right. correct? Yes. Okay, cool. So we've got insulation here, guys. And the way this goes up is the insulation goes up on the uh, wall and then they hang the wall board. We'll come around here. I'm sorry the light's a little bit odd right now, but uh, it's gonna be a little bit odd because they have that bright background. But you can see these guys are measuring right now and they'll hang that up and we'll get some cool drone shots for you of them hanging this up. And then they'll hang the wall board on the top of it. And again, they're only going with a few screws. In other words, not all the screws have been put in and everything's been pre-drilled. Here's one of the screw holes you see right here. All this stuff is pre-drilled, ready to rock and roll. And they have a three-man crew out here right now. All three guys are working on hanging this, but when one guy, can do a detail like putting in all the screws while the other guys work together, that's how they'll do it. So that's maximizing efficiency as they put the building up. And this is just gonna be one gigantic wall. This is facing east, so the morning sun will hit this wall. And here is what you'd see as the finished product right here. So this is what's gonna be exposed in the inside of this building, okay? Now, this area will be the office and it will be finished off. You can see the windows aren't trimmed out. They're not insulated yet. I've gotta come back in, insulate the windows, caulk the windows and trim this out in wood. And we'll end up eventually framing this out and this entire area will be a two-story office area, farm office area. There's gonna be a great big front door here. Again, supply, supply, supply. It's hard to get stuff right now. So this door is about three weeks out and I'll do the full installation. You'll see it in a future video. So I wanna thank you so much, Toby, for coming out here. We did the left hand shake, which is not oh, something. That was a... Yeah, it's not something that most people do. Uh, are you a veteran? Military? I'm not, no. So I'm a military veteran and you do not shake hands with the left hand uh, <laughs> in, the, uh, uh, <laughs> in the east, I guess it's the far east, um, Saudi Arabia, stuff like that. This so what if you're holding your camera with your right hand? Then that's what you have to do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we'll reverse the image. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks man, thanks for talking to us about this. You'll see me and Toby in a future video as this building continues to go up. And guys, be sure you jump in, subscribe to the channel here. We're gonna do a full comprehensive video from start to finish, planning everything after we're all done here. And all this stuff is, man, there's just so much work to go. We pre-plumbed everything. Thanks, Toby, I'm gonna walk again. We pre-plumbed everything just in case we needed to put some sinks, toilets, bathtubs, stuff like that in here, because you just never know, right? Thanks a lot, guys. Please jump in, pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to see you back here on the Stony Ridge Farm with me. This is the Mega Shop. And Toby says it's a home run. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you next time. Woo! Let's hear it. Woo! There you go. <laughs> Bring your wife and bring your kids, we're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! All right, come on, come on in here. Which side is my, am I on? What's your, what's your favorite side? You the right or the left? I'm more here. I'm more on the left. Should I get a box to stand on? Uh, 
Yeah, so we, in the industry, they call that an apple box. So here's what I do. Here, here's normal people height, and here's freaking Josh height, so. Normal, Josh. Ogre! So Wayne, we, there we go. There you go. <laughs> More decorative. Uh, uh, <laughs> this always helps. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Who's got your belly? <laughs> Which is exactly what it has to be to uh, accommodate, the, accommodate door. the door. Nice. <laughs> it ain't easy being cheesy. It ain't easy. <laughs>